Out of hope, they all feel conventional medicine has failed them. The medication that I've been taking is just masking the pain rather than fixing the problem. I saw the doctor multiple times. She told me that I should go for a really long walk and then I would have a reason to be tired. Are prescription drugs always the answer? Or is modern medicine killing you? I wasn't sleeping. I can't recall having a good night's sleep. Not sleeping is an absolute form of torture. That's one thing that I've, I've learned. Typically, if I go to bed for an eight hour period, I would sleep a maximum of about an hour and a half, and I do wake up exhausted. 56-year-old Philip Parker hasn't been able to get a good night's sleep for more than 20 years. It all started with my legs twitching, and that was really frightening. I wasn't able to sleep and it got more and more violent. I went to my doctor. He decided to send me to a neurologist. I got referred to a sleep clinic. When you're in the sleep clinic, you're connected up with all these wires, 28 wires, and they're monitoring you electronically. They're monitoring you through an infrared camera, and you attempt to sleep. What they found from the sleep test is that they were suffering from something called severe sleep apnea. In fact, the sleep test found the Aucklander was waking up a staggering 33 times an hour. So what causes this chronic condition? The precursor to it is something so common, it's often at the heart of sleep deprivation, snoring. Normal breathing during sleep is unhindered. When we snore, our airway is partially blocked. However, during sleep apnea, the muscles in the soft palate at the base of our tongue and that fleshy bit of skin at the back of our throat relax and sag, causing the breathing airway to block. You stop breathing and your body automatically jolts you. And that's what wakes you up. Philip, like many who suffer from severe sleep apnea, was offered one of these, an expensive CPAP machine, which pumps compressed continuous air through the airway so it won't block while you sleep. It looks like you're Darth Vader and you're told that you're going to have to wear it every night for the rest of your life. And you try it and you hate it. Not sleeping affects your entire life. If I could find somebody who could help me with, with this, it would be heaven to me to know what a good night's sleep is. Philip has now abandoned the expensive CPAP machine and has come to see Dr Glenn Twentyman, specialist GP in lifestyle and integrated medicine. The way I practice medicine is about listening for critical information. I'm trying to figure out what's really going on deep down. I'm not treating their symptoms superficially. And before this, it was uh, things are OK? You were sleeping well or...? No, I've never slept really well. Okay. I've always had disturbed sleep. Right. Um, and one worrying thing, of course, is that I started to notice that I might, if I go for a long drive, I might start to nod off. My God, OK. Has anyone told you you hold your breath in your sleep as well? My partner said to me that she's worried that I've stopped breathing. I mean, it is a major health issue too. You've mm, probably, mm, in yes. fact, are you aware that it's possibly the root cause of hypertension and heart disease? Oh, well, I had my bypass about five years ago. Well. Philip may have already paid dearly for his severe sleep apnea. In fact, the silent killer could affect around 100,000 New Zealanders, and men who are aged under 70 are the prime candidates. Philip's lack of sleep has also sapped his body of vital hormones and nutrients. Do you think you've flicked into a bad habit of breathing with your mouth I think from years ago? Yeah. To nail your problem quickly, you might want to go and check out Buteyko. Okay. Where they retrain you so you breathe with this fella here, the nose, and not your mouth. Buteyko is a breathing retraining technique used around the world. Dr Twentyman has referred Philip to a specialist for his sleep apnea to replace the SPAP machine. He's also going to take magnesium and Dr Twentyman has put Philip on a course of melatonin. There should be some improvement there uh, with his sleep apnea, so it'll be very interesting to see how he feels. It is necessary to retrain myself to breathe properly. I will really need to have this sleep problem solved. Driven by his sleep deprivation, Philip has come to see breathing specialist Glenn White, and it's here his problem is suddenly exposed. Okay, now your breathing rate is between 26 and 28 breaths per minute. 
Now that is, you're breathing enough for two or three people. The normal range would be less than 15. What I identified with Philip was that his daytime breathing is quite dysfunctional and that is extending into his nighttime breathing pattern. So symptoms like restless legs, night sweats, his insomnia, his snoring are all a function of this dysfunctional breathing pattern. And it doesn't just stop when he wakes up. Snoring doesn't just annoy those around you. It could actually send you to an early grave. If you snore, you are hyperventilating. Now, we know that most strokes and heart attacks happen in the wee hours of the morning, say between 4 and 6 a.m. We also know that this is often when people are breathing and most deeply. Having already had a heart bypass, Philip will now have to change his bad breathing habits to avoid any more health complications. And effectively what we're going to do is we're going to correct the daytime breathing pattern and that is going to follow through into your nighttime breathing. The chest to breathe. Now that's interesting, okay. More bizarrely, turn around a strange habit of breathing in reverse. I had no idea that um, I was actually breathing completely the wrong way around. So Glenn's techniques will help him retrain and learn to breathe correctly, something you might even need to consider. Probably 80% of the population breathe incorrectly. We should be breathing in and out through the nose. Most people are mouth breathing. People who yawn and sigh a lot absolutely um, undoubtedly have a dysfunctional breathing pattern. Just relax and see if you can bring the sense of your breathing right down under the belly. Glenn's trying to get me to, to change a habit of a lifetime. I don't realise how much my breathing and my lack of sleep affects me every day, me and others. Aucklander Philip Parker has for the past nine weeks slowly changed his lifestyle to try and beat his sleep apnea after two decades of tossing and turning and sleepless nights. I've learned a lot of new things. I've had fun doing it. Real lot of fun doing it. Tried yoga. I hate it. I've always been a bit sceptical about people who do yoga. It was just shocking and I've never been so buggered in my life after I did that. And I have gone gluten free and really enjoying it. And a fortnight later, Philip's come back to see Dr Twentyman for the last visit. Um, and before you came here, uh, before you had any treatment for sleep apnea, how, how many hours uh, of sleep were you getting per night? I was getting probably about an hour and a half to two hours of restful sleep. Yep. Um, now I'm probably getting a good five to six hours of restful sleep. Okay. I've done some breathing training, That's which right. has worked really, really well. I now can't believe it how well I sleep. Uh, the breathing was a real turning point for me because it was something that I basically had an instant response from, an instant success with. I can remember the first day waking up refreshed and saying, oh my God, I can't believe how good I feel. And you don't get as restless as maybe as you used to be? No, the restlessness is gone, the twitching is completely gone that I was having. I don't have sleep apnea as far as I'm concerned anymore. There's no symptoms of it that I notice because I'm sleeping. So with sleep no longer a problem, Philip's now turned his life around in other areas too. Stepped up our exercise and enjoying that. I've achieved so far a four and a half um, kg weight loss okay, program. Okay, that's good. I can't believe the dramatic turnaround in Philip in every way really. Uh, the way he looks, um, he's got great colour, a spark in his eye. Um, he's very positive. So all in all, it's been a grand result, really. Three months of a real learning experience, yes, which is yes. a life-changing experience for me. Excited about life now I, because I don't wake up fatigued. And I'm really looking forward to enjoying my garden, enjoying doing all of these new things that are available to me.